I think we are all aware of the fact that the coronavirus has affected us in various aspects on a daily basis from morning to evening. I mean, corona, 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 and most of it is actually a negative or has negative connotation and throughout the day, the trend will actually continue. Now, not only is this pretty much impacting us uh, in, the, in our physical health, but also, and more importantly, uh, mentally as well. Now, we have to stay home. We know that we have to abide by social distancing. We have to abide by the uh, self isolation as well. While these are important to actually uh, halt the hell, hell pandemic that we're actually in, but all these measures at the same time are going to affect us psychologically, as Zena is pretty much telling us. Now, uh, Zena right now is going to tell us what can we actually do in order to support our mental well being during this period of time. So, Zena, would you like to take over from here? Hello, yes, thank course. you very much, Roman, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hope uh, everyone is uh, feeling uh, good today. Uh, as uh, Robin mentioned earlier, we'll be talking today about uh, our mental health, especially during this uh, tough uh, uh, timing where we like we're stuck in, we're stuck at home we're, we're not able to resume our uh, daily activities maybe work or maybe even like visiting or going to places that we used to uh, enjoy doing um, first of all before I start uh, I want to ask uh, the, particip the participants um, who in the past like few days have felt uh, sad if you can just like maybe raise your hand or just uh, say yes Okay, uh, anyone uh, felt uh, angry in the past few days uh, uh, or like maybe felt like on the verge of like uh, uh, punching someone or hitting someone? Okay, uh, anyone felt happy, uh, felt uh, maybe enjoy, in, uh, like enjoying things around them, uh, maybe like they felt positive? Okay, what about feeling stressed, uh, uh, anxious, uh, not themselves, irritable? Okay, so um, as you see, uh, most of you have maybe answered yes for more than one emotion. And this is actually normal, you know, it's uh, normal like to have different emotions maybe throughout the day or maybe uh, throughout uh, the week. Sometimes we are feeling sad, we, sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're stressed, sometimes. And actually these are normal emotions, okay? So before I go through the session, the I uh, just want to start by discussing a little bit uh, about our emotions and our mental health. So usually our mental health is quite affected by our emotions, our psychological and social well-being. And uh, usually like our thoughts, behaviors and emotions that are interconnected. So if I have negative thoughts, actually this can, and that, that might affect my emotions and might affect my behavior if I'm not aware of them. Uh, if I'm feeling today maybe uh, uh, angry or sad, this might have uh, bring negative thoughts to my uh, my brain, and this will affect my behavior. I'll become more maybe irritable, and I'll become more anxious. So it's important to remember these three uh, 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 words because these are mainly the things when we're talking about mental health and the way we, we feel and we, we we express our emotions and we behave. They're actually related to this uh, module. So uh, before. Yeah, we start into going into the mental health problems. Uh, usually, when someone is like, having a good mental health, it's not necessary actually just like having a no mental disorder. Uh, it's actually way more than that. So uh, it is the way like that person, or uh, let's say I'll speak of about myself, the the way I handle my daily uh, stressors in life, whether events or situations, uh, the way I'm able to solve problems uh, that I face, I'm able to adapt to new changes in my life, uh, how actually I relate to people around me, how much I'm able to maintain and fulfill relationships in my life, whether my parents, whether my colleagues, my significant other, 
the way I'm able to understand my emotions. Uh, when I say that I'm mentally, I have a good mental health, it, not, it doesn't necessarily like I'm not, I'm stress free or let's say I'm always happy all the time. This actually, it's not a, a, all a realistic, a realistic expectation. Uh, also, when we're talking about mental health, uh, we talk about how much that person is able to actually perform activities and he's or he or she are being productive, whether at work or maybe at uh, anything that they're doing. Another thing, it's also about how much we're able to get. Uh, uh, the thing is that it's not only about taking from the uh, from people around us, whether uh, positivity or or things that they do for us. It's very important to give to our community and society and to family around us because this definitely will help us have a better mental health. So, uh, from what I have mentioned, what do you guys think that? Uh, how would I define someone with ha having a mental illness or a mental state order? Any thoughts? Okay, uh, let me brief, brief you a little bit. It's actually quite the opposite of what I have been uh, discussing in the previous slide. So it is someone with ha ha struggling with mental illness or disorder. Actually, he wouldn't be able to handle daily life stressors. He wouldn't be able to come up with solutions to problems that they're facing. Uh, they, would, they would be having trouble in their relationships with their, their, uh, their spouse, significant other, parents, uh, colleagues at work, even friends. Uh, they will be struggling with their emotions. It will be really hard for them to understand why and from where these are. Uh, um, emotions are coming from or what are the reasons behind them and uh, they will be affecting their performance whether uh, they wouldn't be able to do their activities like if I, I used to enjoy reading I would stop reading or like I say if I play basketball I'll be stop going uh, in basketball with my friends I'm not able to be really productive at work and I'm really not able to give to people around me. It's not because I'm being uh, greedy or I don't want, but because of the emotions and the stressors of the mental illness itself, it actually affects all of these um, uh, points. So, uh, a quick question before we continue. Do you think if someone has a mental illness, he can have a good mental health? Let's see, how many say yes, how many say no? Okay, I'm seeing a couple of yeses. Well, actually, it's very true. Uh, if you have, even if you have a mental illness, you can have a good mental health. If you're uh, maintained on medication, you're able to understand how, uh, the disorder that you have, and you're able to deal with the symptoms. So this is uh, it's important to keep in mind that even if I have a mental disorder, I can have a good mental health. It's like having someone who has hypertensive, but his blood pressure is controlled, or he's diabetic, and because of the medication, his, uh, the, his uh, the glucose level uh, is uh, uh, being controlled and he's able to live like a regular person. So do you th how many people in Lebanon do you think they suffer from mental illness? Let's take a percentage. Uh, let's say you think uh, 50%, 20%, uh, 10%. What are your thoughts? 40%, majority, 68, 30, 50%. Okay, uh, let me tell you, it is actually one in four people in Lebanon. Uh, this is based on uh, studies done by IDRAC. Uh, so one out of four pe people in Lebanon, they suffer from mental illness or they have been previously diagnosed with a mental illness. Uh, 140, that's a big number. <laughs> Let's hope we never beat this number. Actually, it's like, uh, let, you know, that, that means it's uh, talking about 25% of the popula population that they struggle or they suffer from mental illness or they have previously. So now these statistics, they might differ um, uh, because of the recent uh, changes, uh, the financial struggles uh, that the people are going through. But for the time being, these are the latest statistics. So it's very important to understand that usually there is no single uh, cause for a mental disorder. Uh, what do I, do I mean by that? So like sitting at home because of the quarantine is not enough to bring uh, or trigger the anxiety in me, or let's say trigger the depression. Uh, actually, in combination of many things, at least we need to have two cause, uh, causative factors that together when they join together, they can push someone to have a mental disorder. So usually the, uh, the uh, 
the uh, main uh, points that we look at, we look at the biological, the social, and the psychological. So biological, if I have a genetic uh, predisposition, my parents, they have uh, a history of uh, depression, anxiety, let's say substance use. Um, if I have a uh, disturbance in the hormones, uh, the neurotransmitters in my brain, uh, maybe of a certain uh, disorder, um, medical disorder, this can cause uh, depression anxiety or any, any mental disorder of course if i have if i uh, am on drugs let's say if i have problems in my relationship if i'm like uh, um i drop out of school i'm someone jobless the way uh, i i cope with things around me the social skills my self-esteem all of these they play a role and if we have deficiency in more than these two items can simply push someone to have a mental disorder. So it's not necessary if I have a positive family history of uh, of depression that I should have depression, unless there was another triggering factor that have led for the starting of the episode of depression. So usually, uh, uh, what we're going through in Lebanon and even before the COVID, we've been going through a lot, a lot of stress. And I think all of you can. Before that, it was the strikes, it was the financial crisis that everyone was going through it. Currently, we are, uh, even though we're just like this in quarantine, we're locked down, but even uh, emotionally, we're starting to burn out. We know that the situation in Lebanon is the not stable. And all of these uh, things that are going around in our life, it's normal to cause us fear, anxiety, uh, feeling uncertainty, feeling that the situation is really unpredictable. We really don't know what's going to happen. Okay. Now, how? What are the things that really can help us uh, to deal with this tough situation? That is, let's say, unpredictable. Uh, there's uncertainty. We don't know how long it's going to take. Definitely, there are things that it can help us deal with it. For example. If someone has resilience, um, how much that person he has a stable mental uh, status? Uh, physically, he's stable. He, he's not. He's not struggling with, the, uh, let's say, medical uh, disorders or struggling with the disease. The support system around that person. How much that person he has coping skills? He's able to solve problems. Uh, how much he can build from, on previous experiences? Because you know, this situation it is even though it's new to us, but I'm sure, and I think all of you can agree, that we've been uh, struggling or we've faced struggles in our life and maybe uh, uh, big problems, maybe a financial crisis, maybe family issues. Uh, they're of a different nature, but however, we were able to deal with these things. And it's very important that if we dealt with these previous uh, issues or problems previously, this will help us to adapt to these changes that we're currently facing and we're able to handle it in a better way. Now, the symptoms that someone can experience, and uh, not all of them we need to worry about and say that that person needs to see a psychiatrist or psychologist, but this, the most probably if some of you are feeling uh, fear, worried, there's some sort of mood disturbance, uh, they're feeling like they're irritable on the edge, they're feeling angry maybe at times, the, their sleep uh, habits have changed uh, dramatically, their appetite have changed, maybe it increased or decreased. They, maybe some of you feel lonely, some of you feel like ambivalent, some of you feel like uh, you really don't care about any, what's going on as if like you're neutral. Um, some of you might uh, feel like you're having problem in concentration, like you're confused about the whole things going around you. Uh, you feel like physically exhausted, you know that you don't have a physical illness, but you feel like you have to drag yourself out of bed, you have to drag yourself to do anything. Um, at home or maybe uh, uh, work related things uh, some maybe if i have a mental disorder or a, or a medical disorder maybe because of this quarantine and these struggles that i'm going through the symptoms may increase or aggravate uh, some people might increase in the use of tobacco alcohol and drugs okay is there anything that you think or some of you are experiencing currently that i haven't mentioned Lack of desire, that's very true. Okay, and this is usually because of the stress that we're going through. The saturation of the news, we're going to discuss that uh, uh, in a, uh, later, later on. Anything else? Midlife crisis, lack of productivity, feeling like you're out of control, anger, that's true. 
feeling wor worthless. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing many emotions. And I think all of us were really like somehow struggling, lack of patience, not trusting, lacking of goals. Okay. Thank you. Feeling useless. And you know that there's so if we can we were going to uh, list uh, we're going to list so we can have an endless list of different emotions or things that we're we're feeling or uh, thinking of uh, uh, recently. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we've been in struggles and problems. We did face uh, crisis maybe in our lives. So let's let me think. Uh, let's think together. I, I don't want you to answer, but I just want you guys to think. Of it, how did you handle a situation that you lay, that you faced maybe previously? And try to think of the resources that you used to overcome of that to overcome that problem. Uh, try to think if like uh, did you talk uh, to uh, to your uh, to someone about your struggles or did you share them with someone? Maybe you wrote them down. Uh, okay, someone saying praying. Okay, um, okay. Actually, you know, being religious and spiritual, it really helps to uh, cope or like be patient or like maybe deal with this uh, with the crisis. But let's try try to think of things materialistic. Like if he, like maybe let's say you know someone that he has uh, he lost his job and now you see him that he's doing really fine. Do you think that how did that person try to come out of this problem? Not just like definitely praying, it's very important. Uh, uh, exercise is important. Crying, it definitely helps us to ventilate. What are the things? Okay, then, uh, talking about it, actually, it's really good. Talking about it, it helps us to process what we're going through and we can come up with solutions to it easier. Uh, have you ever like uh, got sick that you had to stay at home for a few days or maybe weeks or you know someone? that he had to stay uh, at home uh, for a couple of days or weeks. And how was that person able to handle the situation? I mean, like if you're stuck in the hospital for two weeks, this is definitely will cause frustration and it is a very overwhelming uh, situation. How do you think these people were able to... Uh, okay, someone told... Uh, I, I missed the, the message. Someone talked about searching for a job. Okay. Any other thoughts? Coping strategies. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So you created a support group. Very nice. Anything else? Trying to adapt. Okay. Sharing stories. Sharing songs. Great. What else? What else? Okay. Understanding the situation and uh, trying to find a solution for it. Okay. So you see. When we're, we're thinking here out loud, you guys are able to come up with somehow a solution. I'm not, say, I'm not saying that this is uh, the perfect solution or that the uh, solution is going to solve all our problems. But you guys, when you're trying to think of previous things that you've been through, you can relate to it. And maybe you can use some of these skills or coping strategies or solutions that you came up with so that you can deal with the situation of being in quarantine in the social distance maybe some of you have lost their jobs maybe some of you are uh, at uh, in a different country they're not able to see their parents or their beloved ones so what are the things that we can do to maybe try to deal or handle the situation that we're going through but the first thing is we need to really acknowledge what's happening and we need to admit that this is something stressful. This is something that is not the usual norms in life. Uh, this is not something that someone would expect like to be um, a lockdown for a couple of weeks or not able to move or go to the beach or like maybe just go for, for, a, for a drink with your friends or going to the movies or shopping. Okay, and you have to remember that you're not the only people. Like in Lebanon, it's not the only country that has uh, COVID-19. We have all the countries around us that are going through the same same situation. Uh, I, and I think all of them, they're going and the, they're struggling the same. Now, you're going to tell me that it differs from one country to another. Like if you're in the Canada, I know that they maybe they have more support to their, to their uh, residents. 
uh, and the maybe they're providing a better life but we are struggling just like any other people around us okay now when we are in lockdown or when things change around us it's very important to try to create a new daily routine or maybe if I'm a housewife, maybe I can stick to the previous daily routines that I used to have. I'm sure many of us have uh, missed that point, point. So maybe for those who used to work, or maybe if someone uh, listening to me who's a student, they used to wake up, let's say, early morning, they used to go to classes, they used to have a structured uh, schedule in their life. And currently with the quarantine, it's like everything is mixed up. Like I could sleep at any time, I could wake up any time. Sometimes I may, I may, I might stay in my PJ for the whole day. And maybe sometimes even like someone would forget to brush their uh, teeth or maybe wash their face. Not because they're not, uh, they don't have good hygiene. It's not that. It's just because like you feel, okay, I'm, I'm waking up, I'm staying at home, I'm going to, there's nothing I can do. So it's, it, it, these uh, uh, things around us that's happening, it drains us, it makes us more like to be a uh, lack of motivation. Uh, maybe we need to try to uh, uh, have healthier meals. I know like many people when they stay at home and they're anxious, maybe their appetite increase and by nature when someone is stressed, they crave for something maybe sweet or more like more salty. So we, we tend to eat more like let's say ice cream, chocolate, uh, chips, uh, nuts, rather than eating a healthy meal. I'm not saying to avoid them completely, but just try to regulate as much as possible. Try to have, let's say, at least three proper meals throughout your day. Uh, try to ex exercise. Many of you are going to tell me how I'm going to exercise during the lockdown. Uh, let me tell you something. We can always be creative. If you're living in, an, in a building, you can always, like, let's say, use the stairs. Let's say you use the stairs a couple of times. Actually cleaning the house, it's some sort of an exercise. I'm not telling you you're going to lose calories and you're going to lose weight, but this is a way that we're moving our body. And this usually helps in improving our mood. Uh, try to do things uh, uh, for work, if someone's working from home, and things too for, uh, for activities that they enjoy doing. Or maybe hello, we're going to talk about creating new activities, maybe for the time being, I can't do the activities that I used to previously uh, do. Uh, remember, like you need to rest, you need to uh, listen to your body, you need to uh, enjoy. I mean, it's not necessary that uh, for me to enjoy things that I need to go shopping. If we really think a little bit uh, and focus, we can come up with so many things, trust me, that they can really bring up our mood or maybe like uh, make us feel like a little bit of enjoyment or maybe try to understand the situation and handle it in a better way so um, uh, uh, any things that you think that um, or tell me your thoughts about your daily uh, routine have they really changed uh, since the COVID-19 I mean how many of you are like uh, sleeping at a certain time waking at a certain time they wake up they change their clothes they take a shower uh, and they're just as if they're going out to work or to university or just like maybe just to hang out with some friends let's okay Lara said yes so yes so uh, it did change or it didn't change you're keeping your work okay, your uh, work routine, excellent. Any other thoughts? Same sleep, exercise, excellent. Yes, it did change, Ilian. Uh, okay, any, th uh, any other thoughts? Homeschooling, chatting online with family and friends, okay. What else? Some days you just like you feel like you're breaking down. You know it is it is okay. You, you don't have to be really harsh on yourself. You don't you shouldn't like say to yourself, you know, why I'm feeling that way and I should I should handle it better because other people are are handling it better. This has nothing to do with you. Each one deals with situations differently, to stress differently. Okay, you try uh, you try to stick to your daily routines. Okay. Okay. Personal growth, attending online sessions, that's excellent. Anything else? Try to live the moment, amazing, okay. 
eating healthy. Okay, let me move to the second slide, and I think this will help you avoid planning. Actually, I'm with that. Of, uh, I'm with avoiding planning, but to a certain extent. I mean, we need to plan to a certain extent, but we need to be realistic. It's not just like I need to plan for something that, you know, it is not achievable or not, uh, I won't able to, uh, to do it. So, uh, have any one of you thought of uh, to, to create their own to-do list during quarantine and lockdown? Like they said, uh, okay, since I'm sitting at home, I'm going to, I haven't been reading for a while, I'm going to resume reading or like, let's say, uh, find a new hobby, I don't know. Some of you said that they are doing an online uh, courses, which is excellent. Okay, some of them have created, but they haven't followed it. Okay, you know, it's not easy. It's easily said than done. Very true. Anything else? Okay. Okay, I'm seeing some positive uh, messages here. Excellent. Okay, so actually, you know, when we create our to-do list, it's not like something, it's not like a Bible that we need to follow it uh, blindly and we're not allowed to, uh, like maybe to miss things from it or maybe postpone few things up. But when we write a to-do list for ourselves, it really helps us to try to think of what things that maybe you've been trying to think of doing and you really want to achieve. Uh, like, for example, uh, uh, previously when we used to work, I can speak of myself, uh, running between uh, work and uh, correct, uh, corrections from home, preparing uh, classes, I really didn't have much time to go hiking. And hiking is something which I really, really love. And now wow. since I'm at home and I'm able to control my time better, actually, I'm, I'm trying to fit uh, some sort of hiking activities throughout my schedule. Uh, let's say I'm trying to uh, uh, work on reading. I haven't been reading novels for a while. All the things I read are related to psychiatry and mental health. So I'm trying to shift a little bit my direction. I'm not telling you I'm doing a great job, but at least I'm really working on it. Uh, I did a few things to uh, like working on self-improvement. And I'm sure each one of you even if you currently didn't come up with a to-do list, or maybe you, are, you, you aren't thinking of one, but if you sit alone, just like sit down for like, let's say half an hour, one hour, and try to think, if, if I'm now on a vacation and I'm like, I'm not able to go anywhere, what, what would I have done, what would have I done with my time? Uh, what things I've been postponing for ages because I'm being busy at work, education, family, maybe take care of my kids. So maybe it's that time, it's a good time for us now to try to come up with this to-do list. And don't feel like, as I mentioned before, that you should follow it blindly. Uh, but may, let it be a list that it motivates you to do uh, two things. And no matter how much busy, maybe you're like working from home or like if you're a mother, you're, you're really going crazy with the kids around you all the time. Or even like if you're a husband and usually you have, uh, you have time to work from the office. Currently, you need to work from home with all the, uh, with the kids uh, jumping around you and uh, maybe you're not able to focus or get, having your space but you can always have time for yourself. It's not really hard to find like, let's say this 30 minutes per day, and if it's possible one hour, to do something that you really enjoy. Just pamper yourself, try to, uh, for ladies, I'm sure everyone enjoys a warm shower where you, you'll put all these creams and facial masks after that, do it. If you're not able to do it on a daily basis, and I'm sure it's not realistic, but at least twice per week, uh, try to look um, in your room for things. Uh, maybe it's time to uh, uh, to remove all this uh, junk from your from your closet. Uh, maybe to donate them. This will give you a good feeling, actually. Uh, and you really need to set boundaries on watching TV related to coronavirus and the financial crisis in Lebanon and reading the news. Uh, I see it with many people around me. Like the whole day they are on the news, from the news they go to Twitter, from Twitter they go to Facebook, and all the things they're trying to follow is what's going to happen in the country during this financial crisis that we're going through. And what are the number of, let's say, uh, let's say the number of uh, cases reported for today. 
I mean, let's be realistic. If you follow the news 24 seven, would you really have a different solution? Let's see how many of you think that if I really follow, of course, no, it's just going to stress you. It's going to drain you. And this is just like someone keep reminding you of the misery that you are living in. OK, I'm not saying not to not to follow uh, follow the news, but I sometimes if I just listen to the news for like one and a half hour, I just literally feel drained and feel emotionally uh, and I feel all these negative emotions. I just like I feel like I'm going to pack my uh, uh, my bag and I'm going to leave the country. But then when I think about it, then OK, then I need to chill a little bit. We can always find solution to whatever is going through it. And what you're going through, it is exactly how most of the people, let's say 90 percent of the Lebanese people and the whole world are going through if uh, we we'll talk about the COVID-19. Uh, try to look for uh, tips or practice that uh, learn relaxation techniques and this is really helpful like just practicing a few breathing uh, techniques before you sleep and morning when you wake up you try to practice this relaxation technique it actually boosts your mood without you feeling okay so if i i get this habit of having some uh, breathing exercises before i had to bed it will help me to calm down and feel a little bit more relaxed before I sleep. And when I when I wake up and practice this relaxation technique, it will definitely help me to start my day in a more maybe positive. I'm not saying I'm going to come up with a uh, solution going to solve everything, but I'm going to feel more positive and I'm going to think more positive about things around me. Because as we mentioned earlier, we said that our emotions, feelings, and behaviors are actually interconnected. So if one of them is really messed up it really affects the other two other things it is stay connected now we need to think about it ha staying on facebook on instagram on twitter the whole time uh, this is not really what i mean by staying connected you need to put down your phone and turn off the tv for a couple of hours each day because if you're the whole day on facebook trying to see what posts uh, your friends or colleagues have posted uh, and trying to follow people this also it will drain you even if you're not following things related to following up on things related to COVID and the financial situation just like sticking your face to on the screen the whole day and playing games this also can drain you so make this time to be to connect to do maybe to your friends and uh, families um have you ever thought of having maybe a music night with your friends or let's say a virtual lunch or dinner or let's say a happy hour party online game online movie night uh when you're cooking uh, share the screen uh, with your friend and you both can cook together you show them what you're cooking and you see uh, what they're cooking these all of these things they help you uh, to uh, feel like entertained and you feel like you're doing activities throughout your day rather than just like you're still at home you're still stuck at home but at least you're doing something differently um who said that if we are in social distance and quarantine we can't go for out, uh, out um, outdoor activities you can definitely go you can let's say play tennis uh volleyball a one-to-one -one. uh you, let's say you can go fishing uh, respecting the social distance you can go hiking with your friends you can go biking let's say so Okay, the lockdown, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to go outdoors. It's just like you need to be cautious and you're taking this distance between you and your friends. So go outside, guys. Practice yoga. Go hiking. Enjoy the nature. Nature, it doesn't only boost your mood. It also boosts your immunity. It makes you feel more relaxed. Give it a try. Uh, uh, don't keep the doors, uh, the window shades uh, closed. Open them. See the sun. If you if you keep the shades closed, if you're all the day at home, definitely this will. Someone's telling me in Oman it's 40 degrees. You can always like wake up early morning and go for a walk, Kaola, or like let's say late at night. I'm sure you can manage. You can always find a time. And even in Lebanon, it's quite hot. But I wake I wake up early morning to wait uh, to walk my dogs for a long walk, and I take them another long walk late at night. So when there's a will, we can always find a solution to things that we're going through. Uh, another thing, um, uh, who might uh, think of trying uh, to paint, let's say, or let's say coloring, or uh, how many of you are spending some time like uh, listening to the music they, that they love? 
maybe reading a book or like using some uh, aromatherapy. Uh, photography, that's excellent. Uh, uh, trying to sometimes just sit and laugh out loud with your friends. It's not, it's not always we need to be serious and we need to be worried. Just try to reiki sessions. Just try to let out all of these emotions and all of these Mandela coloring. This is quite, this really nice to hear from you guys. So you see, you already came up with many things that, that will def definitely help you to uh, uh, relax. Uh, try to write a journal. Um, you know, sometimes uh, because we are busy uh, between work and these are really going by quickly, uh, we forget to have these good quality uh, talks with our uh, beloved ones, maybe our spouse or maybe our children. So maybe it's time to focus on these things. Um, uh, take advantage of the situation. Uh, when, the, when this all is gone, we're going to go back to running around and working uh, for long hours and we maybe have a few uh, hours or uh, minutes to, to relax uh, when uh, we go back to our normal life. And I'm sure you can have even a bigger list than the ones that, I ha uh, that are sh uh, sh uh, shown on your screen of things that can help us to, re uh, to relax and decrease our stressors. And there's always uh, links. You can always go to like healthguide.org and there are many reliable sources that they will teach you relaxation techniques, how to meditate, how to uh, maybe practice visualization because all of these, they usually help us to feel uh, better and less stressed. So we've talked about uh, the good, the things that we can do, but we shouldn't forget uh, uh, about people that they might be really struggling, especially if these people, they had a history of a mental health uh, or mental illness or previously or currently they're diagnosed with a mental illness or a mental disorder. So whoever is listening to me, if you feel that your symptoms are, um, are more severe, if you are feeling that your mood is more down throughout most of the days, uh, you feel like uh, you're withdrawn, you feel like uh, uh, you have maybe guilt feelings, you feel like you're hopeless, uh, you feel like your uh, sleeping habit is really a mess, you're not able to sleep or you're sleeping a lot, uh, or maybe let's say uh, your eating habits have changed, you have increased the usage of alcohol, of drugs, or let's say tobacco, uh, maybe if you're feeling some physical symptoms like continuously feeling this headache, feeling like you're having chest tightness, you're not able to breathe well. I'm not saying this is confirmed that you have a mental disorder, but if these symptoms are really bothering you, maybe it's time to, to check these symptoms with someone and don't stay alone struggling. Okay, talking about these things, uh, first of all, it will help decrease the symptoms that you have. Second of all, when you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, they don't know if there's a problem, there's a disorder, and then maybe you need to be diagnosed. Tension headache, you know, it is mainly related to stress. So the more you stress, so how most probably you're going to have more of these tension headaches. So practicing deep breathing exercises and trying to relax, this can really help. I'm not saying it's going to remove the tension headache completely, but definitely it will, it will decrease it. So where would I go if I'm struggling with symptoms related to mental disorder? Um, and I want to see if, if this is something okay going through it and I can manage it or I need a medical intervention. Let's see, who, where would you go? Let me, let's say I'm telling you, uh, I'm, te I'm telling you that I'm really depressed. I haven't been eating well for the past two weeks. I'm sad. Maybe I'm having these uh, suicidal thoughts. Um, I feel guilty. I feel hopeless. Psychologist. Okay. What, who else? Have some time in nature, Hassan. Okay. This is uh, okay, but I'm, I'm going to go, I'll comment on it later. Going to a doctor, a life coach, a writing journal. Okay. You guys, what you are saying, it is, uh, uh, it's really good going to church praying, but there's a thin line between like your symptoms are a little bit, a uh, little bit uh, problematic, and if you have really severe sy symptoms, that they need a medical intervention. Uh, so what I mean by that, if I'm clinically depressed, uh, praying it might help me, but it wouldn't really remove away my depression. Talking to a friend definitely it is helpful. 
but it, it wouldn't really completely uh, solve the problem. Uh, walking, exercising, definitely it will help. So actually it depends on the severity of the symptoms. And this is why it's important to uh, to go and talk maybe to a psychiatrist, to a psychologist, uh, if you have a family doctor, uh, community services that they have, uh, they have a psychologist uh, in their uh, setting or a, psycho or a psychiatrist and talk to them and, telling the and tell them what you are going through, okay? And they might tell you, uh, listen, Matna, they will tell me, listen, Zena, try to exercise regularly. Uh, you told me that you like going to the ch to church, so go to, uh, to uh, try to go to church more frequently, try to, to pray. If these symptoms, they were able to subside, then that's amazing. If not, maybe you need a medical intervention. And maybe if my symptoms are really severe, they're going to tell me to practice the things that I enjoy or push myself to, to, to do things that I enjoy, but I need to see a psychologist or take medication. Uh, the thing that you need to understand, guys, is that if I'm medically, if I'm clinically depressed or uh, clinically I have anxiety or uh, uh, whatever, um, um, uh, panic attacks or anything, uh, you wouldn't be able to do things that you enjoy. So you wouldn't be telling me I'll be able to go to the church. You wouldn't be telling me I'll able, you'll be able to exercise. It would be really a daily struggle for you just like to move out of bed or just like to start a new day. And you just like can't wait for the day to end because you're just exhausted and you can't really handle it. So I want you guys to be a little bit um, uh, cautious about it. Okay, I'm not telling you every time you feel a little bit depressed or anxious to directly jump. You say that I have depression. I'm going to take medication. But if this again, I'm telling you, if these symptoms are really uh, troubling, you need to take an opinion of someone. And trust me, the psychologist or the family medicine, they wouldn't just prescribe medication because they really want to prescribe medication. And the antidepressants or the anxiolytics, they're not happy people. It's not like you just take this medication and everything will be fine. But if you have a problem, they will help you to feel better about yourself and able to come up with conclusions and solutions to whatever you're going through. Them. And before we move on, how many of you have heard of Embrace Lifeline? Let's see. Okay, I'm seeing a couple of yeses. Okay. So for those who don't know Embrace uh, Lifeline, it is the first uh, national uh, hotline for emotional support, support and uh, suicide prevention. So uh, we have volunteers at Embrace that they will answer your call on 15, uh, 1564, between 12 p.m. and 5 5.30 a.m., and they will listen to you, okay? Uh, and I think you can relate to what I'm going to say now. Many times we are like going in a, a crisis or maybe we are uh, emotionally drained and we try to talk to our family and friends if we have one, or sometimes we don't have anyone to talk to or maybe someone to trust to talk to. And usually by our nature, when we try to talk to someone telling us about their problem, we're always related to ourselves and we start giving them advice. And the last thing, someone is in distress, he wants to listen to other people to advise them. Uh, remember, each one of us know the solution to our problems. Okay, no one's going to come and tell you, listen, Zena, you have to do one, two, three. I think you need to divorce your husband because this is the best solution. I have to decide. It is my life. I know the things I'm going through. I know my capabilities. I know if I'm going to take this decision or not. So the good thing about the lifeline, it is like if you're emotionally stressed, you want to ventilate. This, the people uh, that volunteer on the lifeline, they will listen to you. They wouldn't be judging you. They wouldn't tell you how dare you talk like that to your mother or your father or how dare you, you said that to your husband. They will just listen to you. They will try to help you, you yourselves, to come up with solution to the problem. They will work with you to build hope. And definitely if someone is suicidal, they, need, they will work on the suicidal assessment and maybe they will, uh, they will go for like referring that person uh, to maybe a hospital or let's say to a psychiatrist or, or to a psychologist. Uh, please do uh, remember this uh, number, the 1564, write it down, okay? And don't say that my problem isn't that big, it doesn't worth calling or I'll be taking time from other people who might be calling, okay? Uh, for me, any problem that you're going through, even if you just woke up today, you, you, you felt you're not okay, you just wanted to talk about it, 
you can call. You don't have to be only suicidal or like you're going into a, a crisis or a, a big problem for you to call the lifeline, okay? But remember, they're not psychologists, they're not psychiatrists, so they wouldn't be prescribing medication or going, and they wouldn't be working with you as a therapy session, but they will definitely help you uh, uh, so, so, so ask me if it's international. Actually, uh, um, I think you can call from outside. Um, uh, maybe if you, um, um, I'm going to write my email in the in the comments. Uh, just send me an email and I'll double check uh, on that. But if I'm not mistaken, you can call from outside. Uh, so, how, which uh, which country you're in? If you like you're in uh, Europe countries or state Gulf, okay, Gulf. So there is no lifeline in the Gulf. Uh, I'll just let me let me figure a way to write a message. One second, I'm going to write my email and please, Robin, please can you just type my email? I'm not able to type it down. Okay, and I'll check for you, so I'll get back to you. So please do call and don't just uh, can't call a show. Uh, sorry, I missed a message. Someone was saying something about the call. Can you just please write it down again? Okay. Yes, they are qualified. Let me tell you uh, how the training goes. So usually the volunteers, the first there's a, 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 a first a first assessment for them, and then they go for a mock call. Okay, and this is part of the assessment if they are able to go in the process of the training. After that, if they pass the mock call and the interview, they will go for a free intensive day training where they will learn about, uh, let's say, about proper communication, active listening skills, suicide assessment, how to help the caller uh, come up with solutions and, uh, and uh, uh, solutions to the problem and how to build hope. And then they go through the training. There's also several mock calls. After that, when the training is done, they also have other set of mock calls where the clinical psychologists will evaluate their performance and after that they will be, they will start receiving uh, calls so these people they're not uh, they're not psychiatrists psychologists or nurses they are people who have the will to help and they have the will to actively listen to people and actually um, some of you uh, uh, they can be a life people a life coach but it's not necessary the skills that you need to be on a lifeline it is someone who's able to listen and able to help someone in crisis or in distress to uh, calm down and come up with, uh, to build hope with them and uh, come up with prob uh, uh, problem solving uh, a strategy for whatever they're going through. Okay, and they can definitely refer you. Uh, I'll answer you now, Muhammad. Um, the call is definitely confidential. It is recorded for uh, for them to evaluate the calls later on, but it's definitely confidential. You can use your name, Hamad, and you can uh, pick Matt Stamil your name. Uh, someone uh, asked me about. Uh, I missed one of the questions. I'm very sorry. So you can. They can also refer you to resource uh, resources in your community. Let's say I live in uh, Tripoli and I want to find a psychologist or a psychiatrist. They can provide you. With the link uh, for with the numbers uh, for you to uh, to uh, to uh, to call or like to uh, to visit or the hospital that you can you can go to, and uh, guys, please remember that not all the resources that we have in Lebanon that are private. We have many public uh, uh, resources, like there are many community services uh, that they offer these psycho uh, a psychiat you can see a psychiatrist or a psychologist at a, at a cheap uh, uh, rate. Uh, I missed the message from Suha. I'm very sorry. It's going, it's showing up and going quickly. Let me try to. Okay, so actually I'm done. I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk about one thing bef uh, before we end, but just let me open the screen. Okay, do you have uh, any questions before we continue? If you want to volunteer, yes. Uh, actually, you can visit our website. And currently, we have a post on uh, on the Lille Madania. 
uh, for the volunteers on uh, for the lifeline. So you just like have to send your CV and they will communicate with you uh, later. Okay, so okay, I can see them. Someone's telling me they should the hotline should be more prom uh, promoted on uh, TV billboards. Actually, uh, sadly, we did have um, uh, we were on TV on several occasions trying to tell people are, uh, uh, on about the lifeline and uh, what actually uh, we as board members embrace. We go uh, visit the schools, uh, universities, uh, universities, municipalities, and we raise an awareness on mental health and we uh, tell them about the lifeline uh, the 1564 number so uh, we are but uh, uh, we, we were planning to do more uh, uh, sessions but uh, because of the strikes before and then now the quarantine we now everything is uh, suspended uh, let me see if there's any other call the qualified with it answer usually Okay, uh, so Sari is telling me uh, short codes are not accessible from abroad. Uh, let me check if there's another number that we can give you to call. Uh, my email, I'm going to send you now my email. Please uh, just write it down if you want to know more about uh, calling from abroad. Okay, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, any other questions? The call is not free. Um, I'm really sorry to say that, but it is uh, the price of it. It is like a regular call. Uh, it's not like an extra charge because it's a four digit. Uh, we've been trying to um, embrace as uh, yeah, as an NGO. They've been trying really hard to make this lifeline uh, free, uh, zero charge for callers. But uh, you know the situation in Lebanon and the ministry and all of these things, it is really hard. They haven't agreed on it to make it uh, for free, but we're still pushing for that. Putting the number on the Ministry of Public Health. Uh, actually, uh, uh, that's true, but uh, what we usually try to um, uh, advertise for is like for people to uh, uh, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and our numbers actually they're everywhere but this is a good uh, a good idea that maybe the Minister of uh, Health they need to post the number clearly on their website uh, I'm sure it is posted somewhere but it's not like on the first page that you open uh, when you open the page on the Minister of uh, Health <sighs> Sensory process, process uh, a person with a high measure. Um, it's uh, Stephanie. It's not necessary, but this it can like be an extra low. Shuolo, يعني هي معقولة تعمل ضغط أكثر على الشخص يلي تخليه more prone for mental disorder. But ما نشرت مش بالضرورة إذا حدا عنده sensory processing sensitivity. Uh, it can like more prone for mental illness. It it really depends. As I mentioned, but you can find the other uh, criteria that the client he is uh, uh, struggling with them. Lahata yishma on baamad do isi fiana mental disorder. Any other questions? Okay, uh, while waiting for the questions, is there any criteria or requirements for what, Sari? To volunteer, yes. So you should be above uh, 21 uh, years of age and uh, uh, with the assessment that you are mentally, you are okay. Uh, I mean, like you're not really struggling with severe mental disorder, I think, because uh, uh, receiving calls from people that are going through distress and suicidal, it can drain the operator uh, further. So we need to make sure that our operators that are safe and we, we are concerned about their mental well-being. So there's like a, a, like some uh, assessment that it will be done. But as long as anyone above age 21 and above, they can uh, join as uh, as an operator for volunteering. It doesn't really uh, uh, just need like a certain age. Any anyone 
and can volunteer with us. And this is usually called for volunteers. And you can fill uh, a form on their uh, on embracelebanon.org uh, website. There's an icon like how you can help, and you can fill that you want to just be a volunteer. If you need further information, just send me an email, Daddy. Uh, Okay, now I want to ask you because we still have like less than five minutes. Uh, you think that the quarantine will end soon? Let's see. No. Okay, let me tell you something. Uh, I don't want to be pessimistic, but we really don't know when this will end. Uh, we know that uh, maybe it's going to be controlled in a matter of few months. But definitely, we might be staying like with social dis distance and taking precaution for a longer, for a long uh, period of time. So uh, let's uh, try to have some plans when this quarantine is over. A realistic plan uh, that is uh, flexible. It's not like uh, it's just like you know I need to follow it blindly. And let's say that if I tell you that this quarantine is won't be over with let's say until like a year maybe we need to try to find ways to adapt to it that's why i mentioned earlier that it is something that we need to acknowledge we need to know that it's something stressful but we need to adapt to it and maybe this is a good lesson for us to maybe face other struggles in our life because if you really were well, you, if you were really able to uh, handle the situation well and you were able to develop these coping skills and relaxation techniques and uh, um and the solutions then i think later on in life when you face a bigger pro a big problem you will be you'll go back and think during quarantine i really struggled financially uh, loneliness and all of these things and uh, and you build on that on how to solve future plans uh exactly it's it might uh, we might end having it like a lifestyle rather than just a a, a phase uh, Jean. that's very true Okay, please, Elian, can you send it to me again? Is there any online psychotherapy sessions during lockdown? Definitely, uh, Faye, there are, there are uh, many. Uh, if you want, call uh, uh, Lifeline uh, 1564 and uh, tell them that you want to, uh, you want a psychologist. And most of them, they are uh, agreeing to, uh, to do it online because of the distance. I know many of my colleagues, psychologists, uh, they are seeing their clients uh, uh, via Skype meetings or Zoom meetings, and uh, there's a way for, uh, for payment. I can suggest, okay, how can I separate between pregnancy hormone effect and real anxiety, especially if I'm having a panic attack, but not regularly? Okay. Uh, Elian, uh, definitely when like someone is pregnant, uh, usually you, you do have these hormonal changes, but these hormonal changes, they need to be within, uh, they should be somehow controlled. Now, what you're telling me is you're having panic attack. Uh, definitely panic attacks, they don't come like every single day. They might like, uh, they might happen to you once every other day. But let's say if in the past, uh, let's say two months, uh, you've been having uh, several panic attacks, and you're feeling that they're becoming more intense and uh, more closer to each other, I suggest that we see someone. Halasna? Halasna, sorry, it's five o'clock <clears throat> as usual. So I'm going to have to uh, intervene. Thank you for the <clears throat> different uh, health perspective. And normally, the majority of us, when we think about health and uh, medication and so on, and specifically health, we think about um, the medicinal aspect, the medical aspect, or so, the physiological aspect, or more, or so. But it's occasionally nice as well to see that um, our physical health is also associated with our mental health, and specifically when we're talking about psychotherapy, which has actually shown over the years to be quite effective as well. So thank you for this link between the two. <clears throat> and as usual, so it's so it's time to call it a day. And let me remind you guys: in tomorrow. Our session is going to be delivered by Dr. Uh, Sola Bahouz, who is also an MD at the at LU School of Medicine, and she will be talking about nutritional supplements, if I'm not mistaken, protein shakes, 